Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a Saturday late afternoon episode of Ted's Booze Cellar with me, your most gracious host Ted. It's currently 3.47 on the 6th of February 2022 and I hope I'm finding you all in a good state of affairs. Um, just uh, doing today's Sunday episode a little bit earlier than I would usually, just purely because I want to get out for a little walk while there's still a tiny bit of sunshine left. And I just spent a large bit of my uh, Sunday morning, as I usually spend my Sunday mornings, having a long lay-in, a nice uh, cooked breakfast, and then uh, well, making some bread and uh, editing some gaming videos. So, um, I'm ready to do a little bit more relaxation kind of stuff now. So now that the bread's in the oven, it's time to get on to the uh, final bit of business of the day, which is, of course, to review another one of the ales that my auntie got me for Christmas. Um, this one is a very traditional looking one, as far as I can tell. Uh, it's another one from that uh, Shepherd Neiman Co. Uh, ale box that she got me. So this one is um, Shepherd Neiman Co. Kentish Strong Ale, uh, 1698. Now this, this looks very traditional, a proper British beer. Although, to be fair... Um, oh, wait, no, it's from Ken. Sorry, I thought... For, I don't know why, I had a brain fart for a second, I thought it was, good. It was saying it was from Cornwall, so uh, yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so that's my bad. Uh, don't, don't, don't string me up anyone from Cornwall, I do actually quite like Cornwall quite a bit, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this looks like about as English a beer bottle as you can get, and I mean that in the best possible way. Simple colouring of cream and black with simplistic writing, uh, I think it's might even be Times New Roman here on the back. Uh, very classy, uh, but yeah, very handsome looking stuff. Now on the back here it says 1698 bottled condition Kentish strong ale, bit of a mouthful, uh, is a living product which continues to ferment in the bottle. This creates a natural sediment just like real ale as it ferments in the cask at the pump. Only local hops, malted barley, glucose syrup and water drawn from our artesian well are used to brew 1698 bottled conditioned Kent Strong Ale. Seriously, think of a different name. Uh, hops are added three times, hence it is thrice hopped. Uh, and it's got a eye of Auburn, uh, a nose of roasted fruit and hoppy, which isn't what I expected. I thought this would be probably a little bit more oaky and smoother, but sounds nice uh, and it's got a taste of rich fruity and warming which is about kind of what I'd expect from like a, um, a strong ale like like what you usually get in the UK so yeah I'm interested to see what this is going to be like it's a 6.5% alcohol volume uh, ale so it's not exactly the weakest but it's not probably not gonna completely blow your socks off either um, so yeah I will say the design of the bottle is simple but clear uh, I think probably an 8 out of 10 for that I think um, if they use some more dynamic designs, I think that'd be really nice. But I think, yeah, you know what you're getting in for with this bottle, at least. I think it's sort of got a very, um, it's got a very just sort of like, you know what you're getting in for kind of design. So get ourselves the uh, bottle opener and uh, we'll see what the nose is actually like. So uh, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see what this is like actually, because with that description of it being a sort of a self-fermenting beer that continuously ferments itself while it's in the cask at the pub um that's got to have quite a vibrant flavor and i imagine it'll probably keep it a bit fresher for longer as well hopefully in theory anyway so uh, let's give it a quick snifter then so oh it's very rich rich but not too heavy on the nose although i can imagine some people might be put off by the um the dark flavors there so i'll give the nose a seven out of ten i really like the smell um, but I can imagine after a while it would sort of overpower your nose and your senses a little bit and I imagine uh, the rich darkness of that flavour of the nose there might not be to everyone's liking so I'll give it a good 7 out of 10 it smells nice but I can imagine uh, some people might not like the smell but me, I do like it a lot so I'm interested to see what this tastes like so quick bottle, uh, quick uh, palate cleanser of water And then on to the most important part of the video, which is to see what this sucker tastes like. Sorry to everyone at home. Bottoms up. Oh, that's very smooth. 
the aftertaste is quite like dark and sort of like intense, but the actual initial sort of flavour and the texture by uh, by extension as well are actually very smooth. It's a really smooth drinking experience. It goes down quite easily despite the fact that it's got such strong flavours uh, or the indication of strong flavours and the, the nose, like I said, is quite uh, hefty and um, um, it's obviously uh, thrice hopped and you know it's continuously fermenting itself so you would expect based off of those points that it's going to be a really rough hearty beer and it is quite hearty towards the end there's this sort of like tiny sort of like uh fruity bit of fruitiness at the end with like a little hint of oakiness um which really caps off everything quite nicely because most of the flavor is just like this sort of like oburn kind of like not burnt, but like kind of like roasted fruit flavour, which is really nice. It's very subtle, actually. Um, more like sort of British forests fruits, I would say. Um, but yeah, I mean, from the description I was reading out there, I was expecting it to be quite a sort of like rich and sort of like sort of full on, intensely sort of heavily flavoured kind of drink. And there is a bit of that towards the end, but in a sort of very subdued way. And the vast majority of the flavour is actually very sort of like balanced, and the texture, um, despite this being a little bit carbonated, is actually really smooth. Mm. In fact, the, the, the carbonisation there is just a little enough to just like carry it along a little bit. It might might even be because of the fermentation more than anything. Actually, come to think of it, mm. if I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section below. But. Um, yeah, that's very, very smooth. Wow, that's really nice. That's incredible. That is really, really good stuff. Holy crap. Mm. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I'm really, really impressed with that. I'm going to say probably like a good 9 out of 10. Honestly, really, really like that. That's one of the best, like, like traditional British strong ales I've ever had. It's really, really good. Um, I, th I think um, the only thing that's holding it back for me is there's this sort of slight floral sense to like the aftertaste, which I'm not a massive fan of, and like the um, the initial body of the flavour could do with being a little bit fuller bodied. But that being said, they're very minor. Uh, criticisms, and I think generally speaking, I'd be more than happy to go out of my way to get this again, and I would recommend it for first time British ale drinkers thoroughly. Uh, yeah, really, really excellent stuff. Good, solid, nine out of ten, and thoroughly, thoroughly a uh, would buy again. So yeah, oh, pardon me. But if you guys like this video, leave a like, share, and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for future episodes of Ted's Bootsella, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to check out anything else I do online, I'll leave the links to all that in the video description down below. But until next time, have fun, stay safe with whatever you're doing, don't do anything I wouldn't do, wash your hands, take a mask with you to the shops, drink responsibly, know your limits. I'll see you guys at the bar next time on Ted's Bootsella. Bye-bye for now.